Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome to the second video today. GGG surprised us by dropping the entire Atlas tree just a couple hours ago, and I've spent a little bit of time kind of going over it and making a couple proposed trees that I'm looking at. We've also been chatting in the Discord. Definitely join that below if you're interested. There's a great community there. We've been chatting and people have been throwing together different proposed Atlas trees themselves, and we've been really spitballing a bunch of ideas. The interesting thing here is that it actually isn't taking that much work to come up with new Atlas trees. If you've checked out the previous videos or if you played in 3.17, you generally already know what's going on here. There's really only two notable changes here, and they're both really based around giving you more choice. The general idea of what you can do with your Atlas passives is still exactly the same. There's no like full new content here, really except for the, you know, the Uber boss related stuff. Everything else is related to make something a little bit harder, make something a little bit easier, make sure that you can get more favored maps or make sure you get fewer maps that you hate. <laughs> There's the node for not dropping maps that you hate, but everything else is generally exactly the same. So I've basically taken previous trees or previous ideas that I've known have worked, and I've put together a couple of proposals here. One of them is more focused towards getting towards juiced mapping, and then the other one is more towards how do I just have like baseline currency strategies. There isn't a ton new here. We'll, we'll go over some of the notable keystones. The real key here is that player choice, player agency is the entire thrust behind this design. You just have a little bit more power of choosing the content that you want to play, which I think is wonderful. So let's keep this short and sweet. Without further ado, let's pop right over. Mm, Got to have my uh, 11, <laughs> 11 o'clock at night coffee if I'm going to make another video tonight. So what I did is I have two trees here, which are very, very similar. Uh, the idea is just to get something off the ground. And you know, this is my bias, right? So this is just to get something off the ground, things that I'm considering for myself that you might want to might want to think about. And maybe this can give you some ideas for how you want to put your tree together. You know, this is generally like I got to red maps, I've been going for as much completion as I can, but we're not totally filled out. And obviously, as you are filling out your atlas and unlocking this, you can absolutely go for whichever points you find more attractive. This is just the stuff that is for my preference. All right, so this is most likely the one that I'm going to be doing. Since I'm league starting Bane Occultist, I want to focus on content that is, you know, ad advantageous for my build. And the key there is Bane is one of the best expedition builds in the entire game, you know, at lower investment at league start. Why is that? It's because we can run every single mod in an expedition besides Immune to Chaos. As a baseline, we're grabbing Essences, Harbinger, Harvest, and Expedition. All of this stuff is lead content that I know how to transition into, you know, convert that into currency very, very easily. And it doesn't require any external currency to get going, right? It's not something like, you know, doing juiced mapping. I don't have to trade for it or anything. As long as I have a couple bases for doing, you know, like harvest rerolls, everything else is just very self-contained. And I don't have to, you know, go out and interact with the economy to extract currency as I'm running my maps. I took all of the shaping nodes and all of the Kirak nodes. Why is that? That's because early on, before we get to higher investment, before we have a bunch of fragments, before we have complete Atlas completion, and we have a bunch of chisels, and we can roll really, really high quant maps, getting those T16 maps to drop, you know, before we have all of our void stones, it's going to be very difficult to sustain our maps perfectly. And these shaping nodes, all of these ones, you know, 15% chance for a map to be tier one tier higher, these go a very, very long way to sustaining your map pool. Make sure that you are always looking out for unspecking these nodes in the future and going for something else that's gonna, you know, get you some more currency. This is an interesting balance with the passive tree where these are just nodes to kind of get you off the ground. And once you're once you got your whole engine chugging and you got, you know, really good scarabs and, and uh chisels and everything going, then you want to unspec these because you're just over sustaining your maps and you're not getting any value out of that. Other than that, for this tree, this looks exactly the same as my previous trees that I've done in 3.17, except I want to call out the two notable things that we're doing here. You'll notice that we have these two sets of clusters here. These are the new clusters that allow you to turn off certain league mechanics. And this is, to me, the most exciting thing, because there are certain league mechanics that I just don't like. And, you know, you, you may like them, I might not. And this is absolutely personal player choice, and you can tune this 
for either just your preferences or for your specific strategy. I think the most important thing when you're putting together any of your Atlas strategy here is look at these nodes. These let you turn off certain content and then you can tune it for what you're doing. So as I said, this is a general mapping, expedition, harvest. I'm not going for any like really juice stuff, no delirium, no beyond. I'm not boss rushing, anything like that. The plan here is to turn off Ritual, Blight, Metamorph, Breach, Abyss, and Legion, while leaving on Expedition, Sacred Grove, Delirium, and Heist. Now the Delirium versus Blight versus Metamorph, I might move this around. It, this is gonna be absolutely based on what I'm feeling. I don't like Ritual. Ritual is a hard off for me, but there is value in doing it if you enjoy doing Ritual. Legion is okay, but my build's not gonna be exceptional at it. It's until I put in like a Contagion and I get an Awakened uh, Area of Effect and all that. I'm not gonna get too much value out of it. So it's better to just turn it off and have a higher chance, you know, to get Sacred Grove and Expedition. So the way I'm looking at this, right, is I'm not explicitly saying I don't want, I like, I hate this content. This is just, I wanna tune my strategy to make sure that the stuff I'm aiming for is going to be more common. And then the one new keystone that I took, you'll, you'll notice we have all these new keystones. This is the one that says Stream of Consciousness. Your maps cannot be modified by fragments, right? So you can't use Scarabs or Sacrifice Fragments or anything like that, but, 50% more base chance to contain extra content. And just having 50% more on that base chance to have more content, just, you know, early on, before we even have Scarabs, why not, right? This is just a freebie, but then later on, as we get more online, this is probably just, you know, very similar to the shaping nodes. This is something that we're going to unspec once we're fully online. This is just, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a booster shot to get you going. Pay attention to this, make sure that you're you're looking at your strategy and what your inflection point is for whether you're gonna you know, move into the big boy stuff and start using fragments. Other than that, there is no magic to this tree. This is really what I'm leaning towards as my starter, but I'm not hard set on it and I'll show you my alternative. If you played 3.17, you'd know about the entire idea based around the hat, which is these nodes up here, which each one of these nodes says 2% increased effect of modifiers on your non-unique maps. There are 15 of these nodes, which means 30% increased effective modifiers. So all of those things that say Nemesis, Bloodlines, you know, Ellie Reflect, all of those things will be 30% stronger, which will then have 30% more strength modifying the quantity and rarity of the uh, drops on your map, right? That was the general idea last league for the blasting, you know, go real fast, roll up your maps as big as possible and get as much quantity as possible. But we have this new keystone here called Grand Design. Now, what I have here is an absolute rough proposal. I have no idea if this is what I'm gonna end up with, but I just wanna get the idea in your heads. Grand Design says small Atlas passive skills grant nothing. What that means is we don't care about any of these, right? We're not going for the hat anymore. Also, you know, the map drops are going to be worse. And you'll notice that I also did unspec all of the Kirak nodes and all of the shaping nodes. So this is very clearly intended to be a second map strategy. Now, what it says is your maps have 1% increased pack size per allocated notable Atlas passive skill. All right, I just counted and I currently have 26 allocated. You'll note that I still have 11 points left, so I could very easily get a bunch more. You know, very easily I could just grab all of these if I really wanted to and get more, uh, more notables. The notable means the bigger ones. And uh, not the keystones, but the bigger ones. And so that means we have 26% increased pack size right now with this tree. So instead of juicing the pack size by taking all of these nodes up here and wasting 15 points, we can just take this one node here and take as many of the notables as we possibly can and just get bigger packs and kill more monsters, which to me is really uh, just fun, right? The rest of the theory is pretty similar to what you may have seen in 3.17. One notable change here is the Searing Exarch and the Eater of Worlds nodes no longer are generic. They don't just say Eldritch monsters. So there's no reason for us to go over here. You'll notice that it says Eater of Worlds monster packs, and this one will say Searing Exarch. In 3.17, it just says Eldritch packs. So there's no reason to go for both now. You basically just choose one. And so I chose to go to Word of the Exarch, and then I am also taking Wrath of the Cosmos. This is absolutely, you know, soft core six portal gaming. Uh, Eldritch Currency has a 25% chance to be duplicated for each altar used, but players take 25% increased damage for each Eldritch altar used. <laughs> but also 
25% chance for the currency to drop as grand currency for each Eldritch Altar used in the area. So it's absolutely like a push your luck. This is a cast on death portal type of strategy, but especially in softcore trade, people are going to be taking this and we're going to see a lot of, you know, very high tier Eldritch currency, which is really exciting as a, you know, as a crafter there. This is the idea of, you know, cast on death portal, go as fast as possible. We're going to die a lot but we're gonna juice it, right? So we're taking Delirium, we're taking some Beyond. We do wanna go into the Elven nodes here. You'll notice that this is actually very important if you wanna do juiced mapping strategy, time dilation. Incursions have a 33% chance for all of the monsters to be at least magic, at least magic. They can also be rare. On top of that, we have three nodes here for 15% increased pack size in the Incursion. And then we just wanna take the Perpetual Search here so we can sustain our Elven missions because incursion is one of the best ways to juice the quantity on a map. On top of that, not much has changed here. I took the flash breach, which is really, really good for, it makes the breaches actually worth doing instead of it kind of slow and annoying. You get 30% increased monster density and it's way faster, so it's not as annoying to do. We want abyssal army for increase, uh, double the monsters in our abysses. I keep harbinger because I'm a harbinger fan. I really, really like shrines, especially, you know, pre headhunter, if you're trying to do juiced maps. These things, not only do you get more monsters and additional magic packs of monsters for density, but you get double buffs from your shrines and 30% increased effect of the buffs on your character. It's basically a mini headhunter all the time. And it just, it, it really smooths out that juiced mapping strategy. I'm a big, big fan of the shrine nodes. In terms of the content that I turned off, as I said with the previous tree, absolutely experimental. This is almost semi-random. It's just a best, like a, an initial throw it at the wall guess. But I'm turning off Expedition. It's just a little slow when you're trying to map quickly. I do. It's probably not worth skipping anyway. It is good quantity, but it is a little bit on the slower side. And when you want to just like go fast, you know, why not turn it off? I did turn off Harvest. You know, this is assuming second character, and I just want to go fast and not go into Harvest. I turned off Blight, Metamorph, and Heist. Now, these are absolutely just random. Like Blight is actually really, really good quant if you're doing Delirious maps. But this is just showing how you can start to think about it and move things around and like have different strategies right you know if you want to get in a boss rushing you're going to look at all these nodes up here going for the uber bosses all that type of stuff you know that is much more aspirational content i don't have i don't have a character yet that can do it in 318 <laughs> i don't think you do either so i'm not really thinking about that yet we don't know how hard those bosses are my league starter character Hopefully, we'll be able to kill bosses a little bit later, but the intention is to scale into that a little bit later. It's not a boss rush, seismic trap, kill a boss on the second day type of character. It's more a, you know, day five, day seven, when we scale a little bit, then we can get into bossing. But it'll just be really good at taking on more general content in the game. And then the other keystone that I took that I wanted to call out, which I think is really cool as you scale up, is singular focus right here. Maps found have a 200% more chance to be favored maps but non-favored maps found in your maps drop as basic currency instead, which I find really interesting because I was already very, very, very over-sustaining my favored maps. Like within a day or two, I was filling an entire stash tab of my favored map and 200% more chance is just really good. And then for any other map that you don't want to see, just having them drop as basic currency, hey, who knows? It could be a mirror. What this is, is it just gives the player more choice, which is which I think is really, really awesome. Oh, and there's one other keystone here that I think is just beautiful and I wanted to call out. There's plenty of other keystones, and I, I encourage you to go to the Atlas here. I'll, you know, I'll link these trees in the description below, but I encourage you to just experiment, just like mouse over these things, take a look and see what appeals to you. Like th this is a thing is like, I don't think it's particularly important for a content creator to tell people what's good or bad here. You know, I just want to show you what I'm thinking in my proposals. But the cool thing about this is it's just enabling more player choice. And I kind of want to just give you some inspiration, but encourage you to look around and start to, you know, come up with your own ideas. My favorite one here is Twist of Fate. Your corrupted rare maps and any Atlas missions, map crafting options, and scarabs applying to them are modified unpredictably when open, which means you are not going to get what you put in. The example here is if you have a bunch of crappy scarabs and you corrupt the map and it turns into a dungeon map with reflect Ellie, reflect fizz, cannot regen, Ugh, I can't run this literally bricked map. If you put it in with twist of fate, it'll actually twist it and you are guaranteed to not get anything that you put in. 
So you can take like your crappy like reliquary shaper elder scarabs, put them in, and it'll twist it into something else. And then you can get a nice alleyways map that has Nemesis, Beyond, Bloodlines, and all of the scarabs are the perfect like winged harbinger scarab. It's gonna be beautiful. It's a dream. You know, I think unlikely that you're gonna get the perfect situation like that, but it is a very cool node that enables more player choice, more player options, even better in solo cell phone, right? To salvage some of the stuff that you have and you know turn it into something usable. All right, just a quick little late night update. I am so excited about this. I think Friday is gonna be really, really fun. I, I think this might be the best thing that they did in 3.18. I always say more player choice, do the thing that you wanna do, do the thing that allows you to have fun. You know, I always see people saying like, oh, game isn't fun, blah, blah. Like in my video this morning, there are these like random people saying like, game sucks, blah, blah. I'm like, why did you even click on the video? <laughs> you know, if you're not having fun and the game isn't giving you the option to have fun, yeah, just skip the league, don't play the game, that's okay. But clearly GGG is trying really hard to give us more choice and more ability to just do the stuff that we know that we enjoy without restricting people, you know, trying to make it for a specific type of player. And I think that's awesome. So yeah, let me know in the comments below, like what you're thinking about. Is there is there anything that's like that I'm missing that might be really, really cool on your league start? I would love to hear your ideas. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Can't wait to hang out with you all on Friday in 3.18. See all of the awesome stuff that you're going to pull off as we have a spectacular league. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see y'all tomorrow or maybe even sooner if GGG drops even more information on me. <laughs>